Welcome to the Alchemy of Ascension Season 5, Activating Star Seeds, Walk Ins, and the New Human of the Golden Age. I'm your host, Washayla Sananda, and today it's my pleasure to introduce you to Karen Swain. Welcome, Karen. Hello, Washayla. So lovely to be here with you, and thank you for saying my name like that. <laughs> I well, bet I, you forget your I'm, name wrong as well, Washayla. Yes. I'm sensitive to name pronunciations, as you can imagine. Anybody that has an odd name, it's um, it's important to us when, and, and it's meaningful when people take the time to get it right. So, <laughs> well, it's all frequency, isn't it? It's all frequency. Yeah. The sound it all carries a vibe. So, if you pronounce something differently, it has a different vibe. So, I suspect it's the vibe that you want to promote in the pronunciation of your name. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's, it is, it's foundational in who we are, really our names. So um, I'm excited to jump in with you. And first, I like to start with an alignment process, a short process to get everybody present and ready for whatever's coming through. So I'd like to invite everyone watching and listening to tune in and close your eyes if, if you can, if you're in a place where that's safe. And begin by deepening your breath and expanding your, your breath into the belly and tune in to the light in your heart center, really feeling that light glowing and growing and expanding out around your chest. And as you're breathing, bring that heart light up through the top of your head, extending all the way up into central sun and make contact with the light in the heart of central sun. And now bring that heart light down into the crown of your head and then into every energy center in your body, moving down the spine, all the way to the base of the spine. And then continue that line of energy down into the core of Mother Earth. And this is the heart center, the heart light of Mother Earth. And then breathe that energy up into the base of the spine, up into every energy center, lighting you up with the heart light of Mother Earth. And now combine those three energies from above, below, and within in your heart, creating a holy trinity of light. And in this light, you are connected, protected, focused, aligned, and open to receive whatever is for your highest good in this conversation today. Thank you for joining me in that. And I'd like to share a little bit about what Karen is up to in the world. Karen Swain is a teacher of deliberate creation, spiritual mentor, educator, inspirational speaker, host of Accentuate the Positive Media, author of Return to Love and Awakened by Death, and creator of the Awakening Soul series. Karen activates, accelerates, acclimates, and accentuates the new world teachers, supporting the light weavers and difference makers, bringing in a new dawn of reality during the, these times of transition. Karen is one of Australia's foremost thought leaders and change agents, showing you the way to a more joyful, connected, multidimensional life. And that's what we're here to talk about. So <laughs> welcome, Karen. And I would love, since this is your first time on the Alchemy of Ascension, I'd love to start with some of your origin story, um, like some key components of what uh, what got you to this point in your life and had you do this deep spiritual work that's a big well, question <laughs> that's a big question because I'm you know I'm getting up there so it's a few years now but uh it was really the death of my mother hence the book awakened by death so death can be such an awakening process for many of us and so is con contrast all the traumas that we live in our life often running so um 
what we're going through on planet Earth at the moment is a lot of contrast, a lot of trauma, a lot of pushback, a lot of fight. And as people push back to the mainstream status quo or the mainstream narrative, they start to ask different questions. And this is what happened to me. So I'm a kid asking a million questions. I think I just you know, hit the ground running. And I came into a very non-religious, very secular family. And their values were all about looking good and making money. You know, the sort of values that most people are like, let's, um, anyway, I don't really know what their values were because my parents just spend so much time trying to kill each other and dad leaves mum for a pretty young model. It was all very ego-based stuff, which most people are born into these sort of families. Some people were born into very loving, caring, nurturing, kind families, not me. So I was asking a lot of questions. And then when mum gets sick with cancer and dies when I'm a teenager, my questions turned to why? Why do you get sick? How, how do we live on this planet in a way that feels good? Uh, having spent 16 years watching a very dysfunctional family play out. I mean, why do you get sick? And when you die, where do you go when you die? And if there is a place where you go to, you're obviously there before you come. And what is that place? And how do I connect to it? So the questions were just born in me and uh, I pursued those questions. And in pursuing those answers, I should say, I pursued the answers. In pursuing the answers, I found them. <laughs> I found them sometimes with a bit of a sledgehammer moment and sometimes with ease and grace. And I think that on anyone's spiritual journey for anybody, whether you see yourself as a star seed or a walk-in or a hybrid or anything, what I've found in talking to people over the years on my show is that especially the walk-ins people think that if a soul leaves a body they've done with this body and then a higher consciousness soul or a point of consciousness is going to take on the body and continue their work in this world that they come in already completely enlightened but with any soul that hits this world there is an awakening process even for the buddha even for the christ all the spiritual gurus that we identify with throughout the years, they still had to have an awakening process. You can come in much more tapped in, turned in, tuned into your source or your, your higher dimensional aspects, but you still have to navigate the density and the thought forms and the limiting thought forms of this third dimensional experience and world. And some people do it really easily and quickly. And some people you know need a few sledgehammer moments like uh, near-death experiences or divorce disease uh, depression whatever it takes to wake us up uh, yeah so what I'm noticing now with the younger generation because of the internet and because of shows like yours with Shayla and and shows like mine and all the information that's out there it's a lot easier for people to ask questions and have those answers through the internet, through books and the internet and, and amazing teachers that are here now, rather than having life sort of hit them on the head with a sledgehammer and have them wake up. So yeah, it's an easier ride for the younger generation, I think. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I know for me, I grew up in rural Iowa. I had, a, I was a contactee from my earliest memories and nobody else had those experiences and I right. just felt so alone in my worldview and I didn't have anyone really to, to model uh, a spiritual, you know, like the path, like the one I I'm on now. Um, so that has become my mission. And, you know, it seems like yours as well to be able to share and let people know you're not alone there. We are a huge community of light and, and, and having this, this venue of the internet, we're able to really get that message across. Like I wish that I had growing up and I imagine you probably Probably felt the same let me think I guess I was always different I was a sensitive psychic completely not tapped into intellect so couldn't read or write you know um, child and felt different in that respect but as a as a child yeah I wasn't really aware of psychic ability and stuff like that I'd heard about it it wasn't until we had a nanny to my father's second wife she had a baby and she said, you know, I want to read your palm. You know, like, you want to read my palm? She wanted to do a psychic reading on me. So, you know, this information was coming in. And as, as, and then I had this auntie 
that used to go to psychics. And any time someone spoke about anything alternative, I jumped on it like, I want to know about that. That's fascinating. Whereas the mainstream narrative, like this is in the 60s and the 70s, the mainstream narrative, especially in the 60s, coming out of the 50s, was really poo-pooing it. Like there, it's crazy, it's charlatans. And, you know, the hangover of those limiting paradigms still exists today in the sceptical Western mind. If somebody is a psychic or speaks to dead people, there is still this narrative, oh, they're just ripping you off. They're just taking advantage of people in grief. You know, there is still this narrative that really jumps on any sort of psychic ability. And frankly, Wusha, <laughs> having been exploring this work and talking about this work for so many years, I thought that in 2022 that we'd be a lot further along with our ability to turn in, tune in like medicine. Oh, God, hopefully what we're going through now will completely transform our medical model because Western allopathic medicine is the only medical model in the world that doesn't introduce energy into their criteria or their system of looking at the health of the body. You know, you've got Chinese medicine that has acupuncture and Ayurvedic medicine that talks about the frequency and energy of the food. Western medicine, no. So frankly, I thought we'd be a lot further along when it came to the woo-woo stuff that I was exploring as a kid. Uh, but, but anyway, it's getting there. We're getting there. And I think that our work, everybody's work, is so important in spreading this message. So you know, you read in my bio that I'm an activator, accentuator, accelerator of the New World Teachers. So the New World Teachers isn't somebody that puts a plaque on the door and sets up shop as a New World Teacher. A New World Teacher is anyone that has an experience beyond the current narrative or status quo of the Western, you know, world, and then shares that experience with others without feeling ashamed or like they'll be ridiculed, like you said, growing up in it was it Iowa Iowa yeah and having ET experiences and having no one to talk to that is I get that a lot from people that are attracted to my work or to the groups especially my experience now is everybody I talk to in my world both online and, and physically is involved in this conversation I've just surrounded myself with those sort of people like your vibe attracts your tribe as I'm sure your experience is too but that conversation of I feel so alone is a, is a big one with many people but that feeling alone and feeling ostracized and feeling ridiculed I don't know it's like it sharpens you it, it, it strengthens you it's like speak your truth inside your fear of judgment and ridicule fear of judgment and ridicule and ostr being ostracized is one of the biggest fears we face in this dimension on this planet and, you know, that's what many of the star seeds and awakening ones are going through, especially in places like the States and, or outback, you know, country towns in Australia, it's the same. You know, it's like, you'll be right, she'll be right, mate. Sort of they're very staunch and strong in their beliefs and somebody comes along and says they're psychic or they speak to aliens, they're just ridiculed. But it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it is speaking your truth makes you a new world teacher yeah because you're teaching through your experiences yeah and and I think courage is is a huge piece of that um when especially when you're not surrounded by the community that's having those conversations but I know for me personally you know I've been doing this work for 30 years but I was behind the scenes and I was perfectly happy behind the scenes until um about four or five years ago when I really got a, a push from my guidance, like it's now it's your time to be seen. It's your time to speak up and, you know, just get over it and not worry. Like you don't get to worry about what people think about you anymore. It's time to talk. And so, yeah, that's, that was a process for me, but, um, you know, I feel like now I, I love giving other people permission to do the same, you know, to right, speak yeah. your truth, talk about the crazy stuff that happens because people are interested in that now, like more than ever. Oh, yeah. And it's amazing how many others are hiding their truth. And so when you speak your truth, you give the other permission to say something they've never said before. Like one of my tribe said that she works with horses. She was a guy coming to hoof her horses 
and uh, they got into a conversation and he'd had like a near-death experience and and she started quizzing him and he said I've never spoken about this to anybody but she gave him permission to speak I remember years ago I was away with a girlfriend they had lots of money and she has um wedding venues and we were out in the country drinking champagne and doing you know, sitting around the pool and doing stuff that normal people do and there was a friend of hers there who had a, t- a very interesting tattoo and I looked at her and I said, tell me about your tattoo. And she started talking about it. I said, you've had a near-death experience. And she looked at me and she goes, yeah, I have. And she'd never spoken about it to anybody before. And so, yeah, when you ask questions and speak about your own experience, you give permission to other people to awaken and you become an awakener. And then we all awaken, you know, domino effect. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, courage. Isn't it interesting? The word courage, the courage to do what? The courage to be your truth to speak your truth outside of the mainstream narrative. I think that many of the star seeds and awakened ones, the younger generation, they don't even see it as courage because they're so rooted in who they are that it's just so natural for them to talk about who they are and they don't see that as courage. And it's, it's like, if you, don't, if you don't get it, I don't care. You know, there's that sort of attitude. Woo-hoo. So, yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> Yes. And we need that. We need the, and and that's part of what causes the world to shift into this more open um, spiritual place. Um, And speaking of that, I know that a big part of what you do and and your teachings are around deliberate creation. Um, Absolutely. And, and I'd love to hear more about you know what does that mean for you and and how do you share that and do you have some special like techniques that you can share with us well when I started realizing that the voice in my head or the thoughts in my head I should say were my guides talking to me I started communicating with them about what's the most important thing we need to understand as humans evolving. And they said, you need to take back your power, the power of focus, the power of how you flow your energy. You you humans have no idea how powerful you are and you totally misuse your power by letting life dictate how you think and how you feel and how you flow your energy. So most of us get bumped around by the waves of life, you know, like, crashing get dumped by the surf and um, instead of thinking I can look at this in a different way I can think differently about this you know we look out into life and we say I like that I don't like that this makes me happy that makes me sad and we don't understand that happy and sad and how we think and feel is actually our dominion it's not uh, reliant on what's happening in the world and when you look at the awakening ones you know that's what's happening I mean I applaud the people that are standing up and awakening, but they're awakening with anger and frustration and they don't understand. They want to change the world, but you've got to evoke the energy you want in order to create anything, whether it is for you personally or for humanity at large or this world or this planet. And so they said to me that that's the most important thing that we need to remember is how to flow our energy in a way that makes can render us deliberate in what we're creating in our world and how we're experiencing this world and then when I started asking about my galactic guides I I remember thinking well who are the who who are the ones that speak to me because I call them the mob because when I reached out to understand who was this energy speaking to me that I used to call my common sense or um, I just had no idea that it was it was beyond my human brain you know it was sort of being uh, inspired by higher guidance they said that the Arcturians work with the mind um, most most of the ET have have uh, accomplished that focus and understand how to work with uh, your thoughts create your reality but the Arcturians are the ones that are helping us on this planet really work with our minds and help us flow our energy in a way that is uh, feels good So what we do is stuff happens and we have actually been conditioned by the mainstream narrative, the media, uh, society to accentuate the negative. So look at our news programs. They completely accentuate, they scour the earth looking for drama and then present it with music behind it and drama, drama. Hollywood does the same. And so we've been conditioned to accentuate the negative 
instead of accentuating the positive. But when you can look at life with different questions and start asking questions, a curious mind, rather than being horrified at what you're looking at and then depressed, then you take your power back to be a powerful genius, deliberate creator in this world. And you're a big part of the new human, like you're talking about. The new human understands how to perceive this world through a multidimensional aspect, aspect and feel empowered by what they're seeing and observing and creating rather than disempowered. That is the new human. And we touch that with the younger ones who don't even feel like they have to be courageous to talk about who they are because they're just going to do it anyway. And if you don't like it, I don't care. So that's a part of that new human. They're not worried about ridicule and judgment and trying to fit in. They're not worried about trying to fit in. <laughs> you, you even see it in the spiritual or even the, you know, the galactic cosmic community. Once you jump on a different narrative like the cosmic, then now you're trying to fit into what everybody's saying inside that. But we have to really listen to the guidance within ourselves and promote that. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So what are what are some ways that people can deliberately create? I know like extracting yourself from the news and drama of, you know, all of that stuff is very helpful. Um, but let's say, and I know you you talk a lot about manifestation as well. Um, I'd love to give kind of a a a technique or, or something that people can kind of focus on to assist or help in their own deliberate creations? Well, this world that we participate in and experience is a manifestation of thought. The whole cosmos is a manifestation of thought. When you reach the higher levels of consciousness in different dimensions, you understand that there is actually only thought. And then we're perceiving thought through an apparatus, through our physical senses. And what's really interesting, the way we feel is a physical sense because we feel it physically, not just feeling to touch, but feeling emotion. So we talk about the five senses, sight, touch, smell, taste, but really how we feel emotionally is a part of how we perceive this world. So we feel the energy of our thoughts and then that gives us an indication of how we're flowing our energy. It's actually a physical sense. So uh, what was the question? How, give us some tips. Yeah, if you, if you have, yeah. A, like so you a, said to turn off from the mainstream news. Well, you can do that when people are first starting to be more deliberate in how they flow their energy. So there's, they're wanting to feel better. I'm going to think things that feel better. You can take your attention away from things that feel bad, like watching the mainstream news or watching anything. But eventually you have to understand that regardless of how, where you place your focus, you can see it from a multidimensional aspect and you can see the levels of why somebody creates what they create and not really buy into the drama or the sadness of it. And so death is a huge topic that we have because death, when I asked the mob, my guides, you know, what's the thing that causes the most pain on this planet? They said, well, your death, of course, because you, you know, the grief process, so many people and, you know, worry over people that die or get upset. And, and we give people, you know, the death sentence or we have, I don't know if that's still happening in our world, probably is. Is it still happening somewhere in the States? Do they still have the death sentence? I think thinking, so. A couple of states, I think, still do. Yeah. Thinking that death is the most terrible thing that can happen to you. But speak to people that have died or speak to dead people. They're so happy. It's not <laughs> the most terrible thing. That's not the most terrible thing that can happen to you. And in those different dimensions outside of physical dimensions, you know, dead people and ETs hang out together in other dimensions. Yeah. It, yeah. Anyway. So, uh, so that's why death has been a big topic. I'm still getting off. I'm still getting off topic, aren't I? But uh, so eventually you have to understand that you can look at the dramas of our world, but you can look at it in a way that feels good rather than feels bad. So some of the tips is, accentuate the positive is, is probably the biggest teaching that um, a deliberate cr creator can do. How do I find the gift in this problem? So I've lost my job or my husband's left me or my partner's left me or 
um, my friend has died or this terrible thing has happened to me. How can I see this in a way? Because we're not going to avoid drama, are we? Like I'm sure when you're coaching your son and he loses a soccer game, right? Instead of going, oh, that's really terrible. It's like, how can you see this in a way that helps you? for the next time you play soccer you know like how can this strengthen you how can you overcome your failure and do it better next time and I know there's no next time with death but what is this teaching me what is this teaching me so like when my mother died uh, I wasn't I was actually kind of pleased when she died because she was so sick she was just so decrepit at the end of her life that death was was a huge relief and release you know, watching this, and she was young, like she was in her 40s, she was just 50 when she died, but she was like, you know, <laughs> she was like mad at the end, that pumped so much drugs into her that she didn't know who you were, and she'd like thrash around in the bed, and it was just so hideous to watch, and so when she died, I remember it was like four or five o'clock in the morning, the hospital rang me and said, oh, your mother's passed, and to tell you the truth, Rochelle, I think that the nurses I don't have any proof of this, but I think that the nurses were watching this woman hang on to life because I don't know why. Why do we hang on to life? And they probably just put a little bit more, you know, morphine in the drip and that just sent her peacefully on her way. Again, I have no evidence of that. But I put the phone down. I'm like 16 and I'm like, hmm, what am I supposed to feel right now? Interesting question, right? Something terrible has happened. Hmm. How do, I, how do I cope with this? Like most people think that death's a really terrible thing. So I'm supposed to wail and cry and be upset and grieve. But that's not what I'm feeling in this moment. That's not what I'm feeling. It was the same when my parents broke up. They tried to kill each other, fighting, screaming. And then they come to us. They put the three kids in the living room and they say, your mother and father are going to break, you know, we're going to break up. And I was like 10, I think, 9, 10. And I'm like, God, about time. (laughs) Like, what a relief (laughs) because they just hated each other. And then my brother started crying and I thought, oh, I've got the wrong response. I'm supposed to be sad. I'm supposed to be upset about this news. So this is the thing. We get conditioned to our responses, how we respond to the terrible things in life instead of responding from a way that our heart is really really speaking to us about. And uh, yeah, so if we, can, uh, if we can overcome the conditioned mind and really listen to the heart speaking to us or our inner guidance or a higher self or our inner being or whatever you want to call it or our galactic mob speaking to us about what's happening and accentuate the positive, like what's, what's good about this? What am I going to learn? How am I going to evolve? How have I changed? How will this strengthen me? Then you, we greatly improve the experience we have in this world as you know as humans or hybrids or star seeds or whatever we want to identify ourselves as but having a human experience as spirit having a human experience because we're not our human dramas we are the spirit that has elected to experience the human drama for the evolution of our soul in every dimension yeah absolutely and um I, I love that you took it there where, you know, the, the death sentence in particular <clears throat> is not a bad thing when you're going somewhere amazing after your life. And, you know, for us, those people, we grieve, we grieve our relationships that we've, you know, no longer going to have that person with us. And we grieve the, you know, the connection, the physical, and of course that's important in this life. And if we can sort of get past that to, we can appreciate the multidimensionality and the expansiveness of what consciousness is beyond being a physical body. Um, Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, I had Stephen Simon on my inner sanctum Mm -hmm. group who is a movie maker. Do you know who he is? I used to be in his uh, spiritual cinema way back. So spiritual cinema circle from, I think it was at the nineties or when that came out, I mean, maybe it was 2000 2000, something. 2004 to 2020. 
Well, yes, I was in an yeah. early, I actually, I remember it. I was in Austin, Texas. So it must've been 2005 or 2006. I was an affiliate in his, I, I found it and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. And I had all of them, like the whole, and they were on CDs or DVDs. So I had the whole stack of all of, I loved those. And um, yeah, I had all of them. So I, I'm very familiar with him. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I know. Beautiful man. And so his wife, his beautiful wife, Lauren, died in 2018, so about four years ago, and she was like 54. She was really young, and he was 17 years older than her, so he's 75 now, and they were both very conscious beings, and as you say, you know, spiritually, he had the spiritual cinema circle and very conscious being, but he experienced a period and probably still does of, of intense grief. Like he said, for like three years, he couldn't talk to anyone, didn't want to leave the house, like real grief over the death of his beloved Lauren and and he talks about this match made in heaven and they knew each other and instantly when they met you know they met coincidentally and as soon as their eyes touched she's such a romantic it's like I found you you are the love of my life so he speaks and he's made lots of romantic movies so he speaks about this romance but I was thinking deeply about why he was in so much grief like why is a such an enlightened man like Stephen Simon putting himself through so much hell uh and and he's communicating six weeks after she died, he had that access to her in spirit. So he has access to her. And it occurred to me that most of the grief or the drama we experience is this not wanting life to change. So I want it to go back to how it was. Like I want life to go back to how it was. And that's what grief is, right? I want you to be here physically so we can continue life as it was. We can hold hands, we can, you know, cuddle and do all those things. That, but it needs to be how it was instead of acceptance of how it is and getting excited for what comes next. So as a deliberate creator, this is a really big tip. And thank you, Stephen, for really helping me see this just contemplating his grief because I've had so many people die on me it started with mum and it's a cascade of death just follows you know like best friends commit suicide and die of thalidomide related diseases and just I've had death around me all the time and I remember my father dying I don't know how many years ago now 15 20 years ago it was a joyous experience for me because I was told that when he would die uh, he was married three times and um I was suffering over the bad relationship I'd had with him as a kid. And my guide said to me, you know, giving me some information about what his life was all about, why he chose the life he chose and what it meant to me and how it taught me. And then they said, your father will leave when his youngest child leaves school. And literally he left this world when his youngest daughter was on schoolies. Do you know what schoolies is? It's like when you finish the HSC and then you go out and party with all your friends. They call it schoolies. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to know what they call it in the States. So he died when you know, like she left school, like literally two weeks. And I'm like, hey, damn, you're right about that. But, you know, they give you this time frame when his youngest daughter leaves school. It could be the day she leaves school, the year after. It's, you know, you never know. So it was two weeks. But wanting life to be how it was instead of accepting it for how it is and being excited for what comes next in this new condition is the way that we can accentuate the positive and be uh, and flow our energy in a way that's powerful. That's really powerful because once you raise your vibe, once you feel good, now you have access to create anything you want. And what's really interesting, most of us think in order to feel good, I have to get what I want. So I have to get the money or the job or the person that's dead has to come back to life or, you know, in order to feel good, life has to change. So we demand that our feeling be dictated to by our circumstances instead of taking our power back and knowing that I can change how I think and I can change how I feel. And that in turn will change my circumstances. Mm -hmm. Like We create through our vibration and our frequency and everything that we're living, we have created through that. We have attracted it to us. We have uh, our decisions decide a timeline because there are many probable realities that we can experience both personally and collectively. And our decisions about who we are and how we think of ourselves and how we feel elect a timeline that will go down. 
or that we'll experience physically. So that's why many psychics or some psychics, you know, there's skepticism about psychics. If you go to a psychic reader that looks at your current vibration and then looks into your future, the trajectory of the timeline you're on, can speak about a future that doesn't happen because you shift your vibration and make a decision and you shift a timeline. Like I have a good friend, Pam, who was a psychic that um, I started on radio with. And uh, we would take callers. <laughs> we had no callers at the time. But anyway, she would do a psychic reading and I'd talk about deliberate creation. And she did a party in my house where she calls them, I can't remember what she calls them, but you gather a group of people and she gives people psychic readings. And a friend of mine came and she said, oh, your brother-in-law has cancer. And he says, yes. He said, oh, well, he'll transition soon. And like, that's like 20 years ago and he hasn't transitioned. <laughs> so he changed, you know, at the time, it's not that she was wrong, but at the time that she f- tuned into him, he was very sick and he was dying. But he shifted his attitude, he shifted his diet, he shifted his world, he stopped being a grumpy bastard and started loving and appreciating people. And he stayed alive, he was on a different timeline. So yeah, anything's possible, you know. Anything's possible when we shift our perspective and our frequency mm-hmm. and accentuate the positive. Beautiful, yes. Um, so a theme that keeps coming up on the summit, and I want to make sure that I, I dig into this a little bit with you is the, about the DNA. And, um, first of all, you know, it's been fascinating to me that every speaker that I've, I've talked to has their own kind of perspective of the meaning and the purpose of the DNA and all of them are interesting and, and beautiful. And so you have a DNA programming frequency light upgrade that, that you um, mentioned. And I'd love to get your perspective. What is the DNA to you and what is that all about? And, and let's just start there. Well, the DNA is your blueprint to life, both physically and what you're experiencing energetically. It is the blueprint. And so what we elected, oh, I just looked at the clock, 11-11, love that. What we elected to do as creators of our experiences before we came into this physical world is we designed the DNA that would limit us in having access to all that we are so that we could have this experience of limitation. And it was wanted. And, and, And a lot of the things that people talk about in the spiritual community, how you know, there is this cabal that's running us, that's controlling us. And, you know, there's fluoride in the water that's dumbing down our pineal gland and stopping our connection to our higher dimensions. And there's a whole lot of narratives out there in the spiritual community and everyone's going, oh, it's terrible. But as spirit, we designed it. Nothing that happened in this world, both in our past, in our, now in our present and will happen in our future, was not elected and designed by us in spirit. But where we are on planet Earth is this away in this awakening or ascension process where now we're opening up, we're coming from a, liv- a limited experience into a more expanded experience of who we are as multidimensional beings. And so the DNA has to shift along with our perspective. And when the DNA does shift, people call it the veil of forgetfulness. It opens the veil. The veil is not some physical place outside of us. It is the way we've been designed inside of us. We're living in these, these spacesuits called you know, human bodies that have been designed. So when we navigate this physical experience, we have a limited perspective or perception of who we are as spirit and spiritual beings and powerful beings. And so as we awaken to more of our multidimensional aspects and that dimensional aspects is expanding our intu- intuition and our psychic ability, our connection to our guides, our connection to the cosmos, it's really just a frequency upgrade because everything is information and frequency that creates everything we perceive this world as physical but it's not physical it's energy we live in a vibrational universe everything is energy quantum science is that you take an atom and put it under a microscope it's energy so everything we're looking at is energy that that vibrates at a different frequency and the dna structure is the same so the dna is shifting and expanding and changing frequency so that we have a different experience here on planet earth 
And what we're talking about in the spiritual galactic communities is that different experience. We can have communi telepathic communication with extraterrestrial beings. We can traverse the cosmos with our mind. We can move out of our physical body into an astral body and scream around the universe. You know, it's all possible. And I've had many of these conversations with people on my shows that, you know, some of the things we're doing, it's not for the special or the gifted. It's available to everyone but you have to want it and then line up with that experience. But usually if you want something, it's because that's the experience that your soul has elected to experience in this dimension. So we have what is called a spiritual DNA, which is the physical DNA, and it is expanding. And we can go to a course and have someone activate our DNA or have a Kundalini awakening we can literally stand next to someone with activated DNA and because we're all connected, it will automatically activate our DNA, like just stand next to someone or even on Zoom because time and space is also an illusion. We can be on Zoom as soon as we're focused on a person or a conversation. We can have an activated activation just by thinking about something we've never thought about and it'll activate us or holding a question. And that's happened to me many times. Wow, I wonder how that works. And then bang, now you know how it works right so yeah it can be as simple as as that but yeah this activation of our dna the different strands one of the first healing courses i did in my 30s well a guy rang me up and he says you want to do a dna course and i'm like what are you talking about and he's rabbiting on about oh you do this and do that and psychic ability and blah 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 spirit guides and i just said yeah i'm going to be there it's like I didn't know how I'd take time off work and who would look after I was a single mother, my child, and where I'd find the money. But there was overwhelming, yes, that's where I need to be at this time. So, yeah, just listening to that impulse and that guidance outside of how it's going to happen. Yeah, live outside of the how and know that the universe is infinitely orchestrating everything you want when you stop interfering in that process and uh, you line up with what you want. Mm. Yes, I like that indeed. Um, so we are coming to the end of our time. I want to make sure that we let everyone know about your free gift, which is 10 top tips to connecting to your brilliance and powers of creation and creating lasting joy. Tell us more about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 10 top tips of lasting happiness. Yeah, everything we want, we think in the having of it will feel good. So the 10 top tips are ways in which we can feel good instead of needing something to change in our life in order to feel good. So they're really the tips to deliberate creation. Like how do I feel good? Um, yeah, without getting what I want, basically. How do I feel good without getting what I want? That's what we demand as humans. Things have to change. Like can I be dying of cancer and still feel good? Can I lose the love of my life to death and still feel good? It's all possible when we understand how to shift our perspective and shift our thoughts and tune in to who we are. So, yeah, the 10 top tips to lasting happiness are those tips on how we can do that. And uh, basically it is, yeah, changing, changing the way you look at things. Like the famously Wayne Dyer said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So we are creating our world through our focus and our perception yeah and our focus is so powerful when we look at something as light workers when we look at something and see the divinity in it our power of focus completely transforms the physical physical experience it is the power that the christ had in his miracles he would look at someone dripping with their illness and see the divinity inside of them, see the spirit that is electing to have this experience, this hideous experience, but the spirit being so grateful for that experience. And he would see the divinity in the human perspective. And his power of focus was so huge that they would have miraculous healings because they too remembered that they are the spirit in the body and not the body having a spiritual experience. So, yeah. Mm. Ten top tips to last. Yes. Yeah, I'll be sure to have that in the show notes so everybody can um, go get the ten top tips and um, and Karen, it's been beautiful to have you on and get to know more about your world and thank you for gener generously sharing all that you shared with us today. I appreciate. And I look. 
I look forward to exploring your uh, journey further too. Have you got, have you got on your YouTube, have you got, you know, you speaking about your journey growing up in Iowa, having ET contact and all that sort of thing? Oh yeah. Yeah. I wrote a book about it. So it's in my book. It's, it's also, I have various things on my channel about it as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun to tell our stories. <laughs> And this year also, I've got some courses. I've been doing an online group for the last five years, which is me teaching deliberate creation, but most people don't understand what that is. So I've um, focused what I'm teaching this year into structured courses like Meet Your Spirit Guide, you know, Deliberate Creation 101, Advanced Deliberate Creation, Expand Your Psychic Ability, which is all that we talk about in our group, our online group. But this year I'm putting them into courses. It just helps the human mind sort of work it all out, you know, who am I? What do I want to do? Do I want to expand my spirit, you know, meet my spirit guides? Do I want to expand my psychic ability? Yeah, lots of people put them in the courses and that's what I'm doing again this year too. So wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you for all you shared. Um, will everybody grab Corinne's free gift and watch her show and your YouTube video? Um, remind me your show is called it's called Accentuate the Positive Media, Expanding Consciousness. Uh, on YouTube, I actually, Blissful Beings is the name I gave to my spirit guides um, when I used to say, who are you? Who are you? And I had a shop called Bliss. And then I had a massage business called Blissful Beings. And then one day they said, we really don't have a name. You can call us anything you want. And they said, who do you think the Blissful Beings are that you speak to? And I'm like, oh, that's you guys. But I, yeah, reverently call them the mob. So if you just put in Karen Swain in YouTube, my name in YouTube, you'll find it. I didn't call the YouTube channel Accentuate the Positive because I set up the YouTube channel like, how long ago did YouTube start? 13 years ago? To teach, you know, through Blissful Beings, which is how I teach the mob. And, uh, and then went in, you know, and the show kind of took over. But yeah, so if you just put in my name in YouTube, you'll see it there. Yes. Thanks, darling one. Big love to you. Mwah. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. For everyone watching, thank you for tuning in. Have a beautiful day or evening. Namaste.